Hi everyone, it's Jewel, and tonight we're touring around some art gallery openings in central London. Starting off, we're at David Kovats Gallery in Covent Garden. And this ended up being an interesting surprise because as you can see, all the front windows of the gallery were blacked out. And honestly, I even walked by the gallery the first time because I didn't recognize it. Um, so they have the windows blacked out and then they left this small rectangular peephole so people from the street can kind of look through and catch a glimpse of the art. And I think this creates a nice sense of anticipation to see the full exhibition, and I think it also draws attention to the gallery space by being so different than how it normally looks. And if you're into art history or institutional critique, I'm sure you've read or heard about the white cube in relation to gallery spaces, which end up being typically very bland white-walled spaces. And I think this blackout look from the outside really goes against this and kind of subverts our expectations of a gallery space. I thought it was pretty interesting and it also served a functional purpose since these works featured LED lights. Once you enter the space, the only light in the room comes from the artwork themselves. Zolt Boldani's works are part painting, part light work, hence the show's name, Hybrid. And it was the first time I've seen anything like this, where both the painting and the lights are integrated to create one cohesive piece. And during his process, Zolt starts painting and gets kind of the general shapes, the outlines, onto the canvas. And then he goes and molds these flexible LED lights behind the canvas and kind of goes with the painting and adds some details. And then, and then he finishes the painting once all the lights are on. And I think this um, process really allows for the two distinctive mediums to play together and the light almost starts to act as an additional brushstroke within the painting. The use of light behind the canvas also creates some beautiful dimension to the work that wouldn't be possible otherwise. And I thought it was quite interesting, in each of these works you can see that the lights are used in the different ways. Um, in some, it's very obvious that the lights are there. Um, or sometimes they're adding depth to the work, they're emphasizing a shape, contrasting or mimicking the motion of a figure, or maybe adding drama to the piece. And in some, it's you know very clear that this light is present can see kind of a rigid line of it, but in others it kind of disappears and just adds this glow to the painting that makes it really beautiful. Beyond the lights, the subject in the paintings seem to be pulled from historic or old master paintings, but with some mythical and mysterious elements as well. And Zolt is a Hungarian artist, and David Kovács' gallery often ends up featuring artists from Hungary and Eastern Europe. The next stop was Ben Hunter Gallery, which ended up being quite a quick stop because it was a smaller space and super busy at the opening. And they were showing works by Christopher Page that play with shadows and reflection. It took me a while to even realize that the frames and the shadows on these paintings were simply painted onto a flat surface. They looked quite real. Um, and Page is pulling from several traditions in art history to create these paintings, such as Trompe l'oeil or Trick of the Eye. And these works deceive us by creating features and shadows that do not really exist. The illusion of depth and false textures also draws inspiration from, from some Baroque paintings as well. Although this isn't a huge exhibition, the works were quite interesting to view and analyze, and I definitely recommend seeing. At Grosvenor Gallery, they're showing works by Faiza Butt, created during the past two years during the reflection and isolation of lockdown. This exhibition features paintings, which was a medium that Faiza had not been creating really often until recently, 
Within the press release for the show, there's a quote from Faiza saying, It took me years to find the courage to finally negotiate with myself that painting, no matter how representational its intentions, does not rival a camera, and in fact cannot be compared at all. End quote. It's interesting, I think, to frame this exhibition within this with this in mind and seeing the creation of these paintings as sort of a rebellion against some of her training and her internal mindset as an artist. And I found the paintings themselves also very interesting. Faiza is intrigued by this exoticizing and discovering of other cultures that was really prominent in the 18th and 19th century. Her works feature birds, which draw heavily on the Dutch Golden Age painting that almost scientifically document birds and other animals. These Golden Age works also serve to document new discoveries and materials found through expanded trade and travel. And her ceramic works in the show are also inspired by Japanese and Chinese porcelain that were obsessively traded in the 19th century. And I really like this uh, exhibition because on first glance you look around the gallery and you could think, oh, this was, you know, a s group of paintings done in the 19th century, um, created during the golden age of globalization. Um, but on closer examination, you start to see these details that hint at contemporary culture. Garbage and food wrappers are seen among the birds. A TV remote takes the foreground in a portrait and modern brands are incorporated into the ceramic works. Next, Spruth Magers had several exhibitions on display, but the first was already visible from the street. On the ground floor, Pamela Rosencraft's exhibition, Healer, created a green glow in the space, and it was filled with reflective mirrors, partially obscured, and the space had an eerie and artificial feeling. It kind of felt like a creepy alien movie or something. And the highlight of the space seemed to be this robotic snake covered in the shimmery scales. And at the time I went, it wasn't moving or anything, but it seems like it might normally, <laughs> might normally move around the space. In the other room, there's a similarly shimmery scaled object on a pedestal. The artist claims to perceive people as living between nature and artificiality, which could possibly be seen in the snake's somewhat natural and somewhat mechanic features. Overall though, it seems to be an exhibition that tries to unsettle the viewer, but without really much clarity on the meaning or significance of these works. Upstairs, the gallery was also showing an exhibition with works by Thomas Shabitz. This exhibit had a nice variety of mediums with a strong visual continuity. I really liked these kind of bold colors and shapes, and it's somewhat rare to see an artist create work in two and three dimensions that are so similar in these aspects. It seemed just really cohesive, the whole show. And he's often exploring ideas of abstraction, and you can see some of the features of his work end up serving as both the image and objects. It's kind of this almost like flattening of the space. The last, although somewhat quick, stop on tonight's gallery tour was Sapling Gallery. We arrived just before closing, so it was super busy. Um, but this was an exhibition of Angus McCrum's work, curated by Charlotte Call and Casper Williams. Angus works primarily with found objects, recycling things from the previous uses into sculptural art pieces. He also doesn't really try to hide this fact, and it's often very clear what objects are used, and kind of alludes to the previous lives these things might have had.
I quite like the three-dimensional aspects that this created in his work, and even the paint is built up quite a lot to make this great texture. And that's all for today's gallery tour around central London galleries. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on art events in London.